things. This is positiveologist Lynette Turner. Come on in. Have a seat on your favorite couch, your favorite chair. Grab a cup of coffee and a cup of tea. The positiveologist is in the house. As a positiveologist, I work with individuals and groups of people to help you create the most productive, proactive, and positive life possible. I am a positivity life coach, a certified dream teacher with the Robert Moss School of Active Dreaming, a certified angel speak facilitator, Reiki practitioner, sound healer, and ordained interfaith interspiritual minister. So I'm here to serve you in a wide variety of ways. I invite you to visit my website, which is www.positivebliss.com. And if you haven't signed up for my free weekly positivity message, I encourage you to do so. We could all use a little positivity now and then. And I'm delighted to send you these messages once a week. So come on in and let's have a wonderful conversation tonight. We all know that we have issues and challenges that we have to deal with every day, but there's no reason we can't do this from a positive point of view. You know, you might fall down to that dark hole, but we're able to get up and see that light at the end of the tunnel. We know that light is there. We have to trust that it's there. And we each have the opportunity to do that. No matter what else is going on around us, no matter what kind of negativity is happening, we have control of our own lives in that way. So this is a show that focuses on the power of positivity. And I love to have an array of guests join us who share their expertise on a variety of topics that can play a role in each of us living the best life that we possibly can. So tonight, I'm doubly excited because I have two guests with me this evening. I have Sonia Ketchian and Ty Holmes. Hi, Sonia. Hi, Ty. Hi. Welcome, Hi. Welcome to Hi. the show. I'm so How happy are you, to be both on. Um, and we're going to be talking about a really fascinating topic, spirituality and the soul the, and the role of social justice. So what does spirituality have to do with social justice and how do the two of those fit together? And I can't think of any other two guests who are any better, well suited to talk about this topic than these two. They're extremely involved in this and uh, we're going to learn a lot from their wisdom. We're going to be jazzed up and excited to go out and take some social action ourselves by the time we have this conversation tonight. So uh, we're going get to the, get the ball rolling and I'm going to start, I'm going to turn it over first to Sonia and then to Ty and to have each of them tell us a little bit about themselves, their background, um, so we have a, a bit of context for them. So uh, and don't be shy about how wonderful you are. Uh, so Sonia, why don't you take it away first and, and tell, our, tell our viewers a bit about you. Hi, Lynette. Thank you so much for having me on. Um, you know, we've known each other for quite a few years now, you and I. Um, we, we met when you were involved, and I think you might still be involved, with the Happiness Club in Connecticut. Um, my, um, which, right your now, wonderful, which your wonderful brother runs. <laughs> with my brother, Lionel Ketchian, who is, um, I, I guess he's um, Mr. Happiness, I guess they call him now. Um, but. Uh, We've been, uh, we've been connected on the spiritual path for many years. I'm an interfaith and interspiritual inter minister, and I'm co-founder of One Spirit in Action with my dear friend Ty Holmes, and also we are co-founders of the Just Love Campaign. Um, we were both ordained in 2013, and uh, during that time, I could speak for myself, but uh, it was my passion at some point to, uh, it just woke up in my heart to be involved in um, sacred activism or, or, or the social or, or um, love-based action and, and getting involved in that sort of work. So, um, so that's where my life has been since then and it's been a wonderful, exciting, um, exciting experience to be able to serve in a way that I, I had uh, never even ex ex expected to in my lifetime. So, Great. Thank you. Thank you, Sonia. Ty, can we hear about you? Sure, absolutely. I, uh, Sonia is my, uh, my, my partner in crime there, which is uh, it's awesome uh, to work with her. I, I would say that uh, my, my journey to seminary was an interesting one. Uh, I think everyone has uh, a, a rather interesting story. The, the short end of it is, uh, in most times of my life, I think it would have been the last place uh, that I expected to find myself. Um, but once I found myself there, I knew it was the right place. And what happened there, and, and I'm sure that you both experienced it as well, is, is the tremendous heart opening 
Uh, it deepens your connection to practice, deepens your connection to love, and as a result of that deepening, as a result of that heart opening experience, you just want to share that in some way with the world. And so Sonia and I chose um, one of the most unifying ways we could uh, through service, through sacred service, through finding need, finding our own heartbreak, and trying to find a way to serve that population, those communities in the world. Great. Mm. Thank you. So, you know, I think a lot of people, if they think of spirituality and they think of social justice, they might not think of them in the same sentence. And I, I think there may be a lot of people who have actually been doing social justice work but wouldn't call it that because I think of the, the way I volunteered over the years and the things I'm connected to and the way mm -hmm. I try to help people. But it never dawned on me that it's social justice, but I think it, I think it probably is. So if someone came up to you and asked you, what is social justice, how would you respond? What would you say it is? Well, go for it, Ty. Well, I would say that I'm actually more comfortable with uh, a definition of sacred service than social justice. Okay. Um, but they are, they are related, right? They are connected. In essence, there's need in the world. There's heartbreak in the world. And in that heartbreak, when you find yourself in a position where you can serve, uh, where you can serve sort of the highest in you know all people, in effect, you are connecting to and, and building social justice. I would say that the the connection there, though, really with spirituality is simply this: all of the wisdom traditions on the planet, they have a basis in practice, a basis in reminding yourself of source and love that exists within you. And when you steep yourself in practices, no matter what the practice is, no matter what, what tradition it stems from, the natural evolution of that process within you is that you start to see it outside of you, and then you start to get involved. And I think that that's the connection. It's the notion that when you're sitting in meditation, or if it's prayer, or for for folks who really have a deep connection with nature, or with writing, or with music, uh, they find that their hearts open in such a way that they can't help but share. Mm -hmm. They start to see that love everywhere, and they effectively can't keep their hands to themselves. Mm -hmm. Yes, they have to get, you know, out there and 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 touch the hearts of others uh, through a variety of activities. And I think that's where Sonia and I found ourselves. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Sonia, would you add anything to that? Yeah, I, I, um, I, I think going back to uh, how maybe the first and second question we were going to discuss, uh, mm -hmm. what, what role does spirituality play in social justice? Mm -hmm. Can I go into that? Oh, please. All right, thank you. Um, I think, as Ty said, you know, for us, um, and speaking for, for, for me, I, I guess, or for both of us, that you know, we look at it almost as, uh, as a, a, a love-based path to to serve and um, and be vessels of the divine on on earth however we can to try to um, to to make that difference and do that um, that breaking down of, of other with people uh, I guess that's where spirituality comes down into that role into 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 the the, the, um, the discussion of social justice would be bringing the um, the idea of, of serving, I guess, serving God or serving what we consider our creator or what is sacred um, in, in, in body. Do you think my... Oh, go ahead, Ty. Well, and, and I, would just, I would just add to that that um, in terms of that connection between spiritual practice and service is that when you're immersed in practice, you're immersed in unit of awareness you're immersed in that reminder that we are all connected, that we are all one through consciousness and energy and love. So that when you move from that foundation or that platform, you're in effect affecting, I think, the memory of all those you come in contact with. Because you're moving from the standpoint that no, what, no matter what position we find ourselves in, in any, any issue or situation, that we are all one and our action is stemming to remind us of that. 
to remind us of the love that's centered at the ground of our being. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Do you think that by nature we're creatures of sacred service? Yes. I would say so. I yeah. would say so. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Especially when we're when we're awake. Um, I think that's where the practice comes in to keep us, um, to make us come back to to ourselves. That uh, that's the core. That that is uh, that is that is loving. That is concerned for others. I mean, if um, there there's a reason. I think every sacred path says, you know, love your brother like you love yourselves, yourself, or um, to to treat your brother as you would treat yourself. It's in the core of everyone, I believe, it, you know, that, that we, the major ones at least. Um, so I do think it's innately our nature. I just think sometimes we get caught up in, in the, uh, the part of ourselves that, that forgets this. I think that, that one of the operative words sense? is when you said yeah. awake, because I think yeah. about even when I, when I come into New York, I live in Connecticut, I come into New York and I walk to One Spirit, so I, I'm so privileged to do that this year. I'm a dean's assistant, so I have to take mm -hmm. that walk. But you often see people in need on the street. You see people, homeless people on the street. Mm -hmm. and, I, and I'm so often called to stop and if I have a couple of dollars, if I have food, or to just at least look that person in the eye and acknowledge that they're there, mm -hmm. that's, that's service, right? And yes. you see so many people who are just oblivious. It's like they have blinders on. And so when mm -hmm. you're talking about the being awake part, I, I feel like yes. that's so much. That's so much of it is just being, just being aware and being yeah. sensitive and being um, yeah. understanding that everybody's valid. I don't care if you have a million dollars or a penny. You know, everybody has meaning. Everybody has purpose. Everybody's divine. Mm -hmm. And you know, to have get, have a more and more people. Think that way and embrace that is is what we need to have happen, and what you what you guys are doing in the work that you're doing um, presently. And you know, um, bringing that you bring that topic up, that's that's kind of how One Spirit in Action started. Um, you're just a mind quite... reader. That was my next question for the both of you. <laughs> <laughs> well, a couple of years ago, um, it was Christmas time, and uh, uh, Ty and I and uh, our friend Amanda. Uh, decided um, to go out and instead of having gifts uh, that holiday uh, we were going we decided we'd feed some people so we uh, we um, packed up sandwiches and little gift bags Christmas bags with candy canes and 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 uh, water and brownies and little chocolates and all kinds of stuff put a little bow on it and uh, we filled up uh, filled up Ty's car his his uh, van and uh, we drove around New York. We spent about four or five hours going around the city, uh, offering a meal to different to, to strangers that seemed like um, like they could could use a meal or would enjoy a meal. So that was our our first thing we had done together, and it was it was a it was a very heart opening experience, um, and. That was, I guess, the first thing, and then, um, you know, the conversation came up at One Spirit, and and then things started to evolve from there. Yeah, I, th I think that um, mm -hmm. to to piggyback on that, but to go back to your other question about uh, is uh, a sacred service something that is innate, right? Mm. Look at the relationship between parents and their child, right? Right there, I mean, just the, the feeding of them, the, the loving them, it is innate. We're wired for it. It's actually intelligent. It's smarter to live in a love-based society. Survival actually depends upon it, right? So I think it is innate. I think it is wired in. I think it's both learned behavior, and I think it's behavior that emanates from something unexplainable, from, you know, a mystery. And you, you spoke about coming in, Lynette, into the city. And you know, having that desire to stop and and talk to to people who are struggling, and and also noticing others sort of in you know sort of that that city tempo, that that tunnel vision where they've got to get to the next thing. But I try to remind myself, and and what practices remind us of is that most of the folks who are walking around that appear to have tunnel vision, they don't. They it's a shield up against the pain you know, that says to them that it's not possible 
to have the love-based world that they want and that everything around them gives them the evidence of that school of thought, right? Mm -hmm. So it's, if I stop and I make eye contact with a person, even for a moment that's struggling, it may pierce my heart in a way and then I won't know what to do with it. Therefore, I have pain to stay with. As opposed to if you have, if you have practices, if you have something that you go back to that grounds you on a regular basis, you stay open to the possibility that everything that we see manifested is coming from our relationship with our thoughts and how those thoughts become actions. And if we shift that to a unit of awareness, it then shifts everything around us into that awareness. And everything seems open and more possible and more free. And that, that pain has a grounding, so to speak. Does that make sense? Oh, that makes complete yeah. sense. And, you know, I experience both yeah. of those. I'll, I'll, I'll feel that pain and that sort of, you know, what can I do? What can I do? What can I do? You know? And then when I do go back to my chanting, my meditation, I do remember there, there is something that can be done. There is a vibration that we can collectively rise that can make it, that can make a difference. There are groups we can join, um, and people we can connect to, so that there can be this joint effort to make this world a better place. I'm interested to know if anything in your specific backgrounds growing up sort of led you down this road as well. I guess the answer in a way has to be yes. You wouldn't be here. Um, but are there any particular incidents? Sometimes there's people who've had had actually had hardships and didn't have that sort of nurturing life, but they know that there's something better and they, they yearn for that and they want to help. Some people were fortunate and they were raised in a loving environment. And this is where, you know, I was, ever since I was young, you need to volunteer, you need to help, you need to do something. I was a peer counselor in junior high school. I mean, start, it's just like, you know, I work in the arts. If you get kids involved in the arts when they're young, they'll appreciate it growing up. So I had a life experience that, that led me to, to be the way I am, but I guess people have all sorts of different experiences. So I'm just curious about each of your um, experiences growing up and if there was something that you think helped sort of lead you on this path. Sonia, you want to go first? Mm. <laughs> well, social justice. Well, I can tell you what brought me onto the spiritual path. Okay. And that was probably, um, it was probably my family um, and my father who was very deeply spiritual and very compassionate. Um, he was not a person that saw other in anyone. And uh, he had such a gregarious, warm way about him with any stranger. And uh, really, um, however he, he interacted, there was always a sharing of kindness and love. And, um, you know, I guess sometimes uh, sacred activism or love-based service is not always something uh, big. And sometimes it's in gentle moments of kindness with strangers. Um, and I, not to minimize, uh, you know, uh, the, the so many different ways that we can make a huge impact in the world. But that's what I witnessed. I witnessed a person that his being was kindness. And his, uh, much of his life was um, focused on helping, helping other people around him, whether they were people he knew or didn't know. And that was very, um, I guess, impactful on myself and my brother. So um, that was, I guess, one part of it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Thank you. What about you, Ty? Um, I would say similar stories, a little, a, a little different but similar. My, uh, my practice here and my work with Sonia didn't stem from any major tragedy. I was very fortunate growing up to have two uh, loving parents that loved each other and loved me and loved my sister. Um, and th I always knew where my place was in the world because of that love. And the neighborhood that we moved in, another gift uh, was that it was a diverse neighborhood. So anytime I was confronted with the notion of other, I had a group of friends that showed me that those notions were erroneous just by our general brotherhood and love for each other. Um, that still, I would say, wasn't really uh, enough to, to drive me into seminary. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I would say that, at least as far as spiritual practice, yoga for me was the gateway. 
I had a, uh, and still have a phenomenal yoga teacher um, through the World Yoga Center in Manhattan. Her name is uh, Rudrani uh, Brown, and being steeped in the the tradition of yoga and and sitting at her feet, it did something to me that it opened me up in a way that there was a desire for exploration of yoga and other traditions, and and that and some other coincidences drove me to seminary. And then being in seminary and being around all of these people going through, it's like a, it's like a, a, a birth, a, a, a re-awakening uh, into your own center. That then propelled myself and I believe Sonia into you know further action. So it was a sort of a connecting, some building blocks, some you know Lego cubes being connected together that eventually brought me to where I am uh, or what we're doing now. And I'm, I'm excited to see, uh, you know, where it takes us. But it's, I, I definitely am reminded of the fact that um, something is happening that I can't take full credit for. Yes? Uh, we're a, yes. a part of something. We, um, uh, we're having this conversation, and yet there are so many other people who have participated in these service opportunities and... and have made this more of a reality than I myself alone or Sonia herself alone could have could have ever done. Mm-hmm. Uh, so it's there. There's something else at work. There's well, else at work. it's the divine, and you know what's wonderful too is you hear a lot of people talking about things that need to happen or be done, mm-hmm. but you're actually doing something. So I'd love to spend a little bit of time talking about one spirit in action and. You know, when you were driving around that, in that van that first day, could you have imagined that uh, you would have created what's happening now and been as active as you have been and all the things you're planning to do? So um, tell our viewers about what One Spirit in Action does and at the same time tell them um, how they can connect and get involved if they'd like to. Who wants to go first? Okay, I'll take it. Uh, you got to tie or you want me to no, do it? No, ladies first, please. Oh, please. Thank you, Jack. Um, so One Spirit in Action is a, um, is, you know, maybe you have it in front of you. Ty, do you have our um, our mission statement anywhere um, nearby? I don't have it in front of me. I can just say that the, the mission of One Spirit in Action is the, the realization of divine love on earth through a dedicated and persistent practice of sacred service. It's through service that we find not only unity, uh, that we find strength, but that we take what it is we're being reminded of or what we're hearing from, you know, the ground of our being, and through service we see it manifest in the world. The the notion was most of the time service opportunities are sort of big and organized and hard, and how do we make service a regular part of people's lives? Uh, so we endeavor to create a calendar of service and get people involved and we're still growing in how we make that manifest and make it easier for folks but we came up with you know some service ops or service opportunities that weren't overly difficult but just the the um, participation in them uh, was life-changing and inspirational for lots and lots of folks. And, and one of them was the, the stealth giving that we did together and, and we're able to do that two years uh, running and others are, are peace notes and then there are a whole host of other activities that have sort of grown out of it. So talk about, some, talk about peace notes. Oh, okay. So uh, peace notes... It's awesome. The, so the... <laughs> Peace Notes basically, it stemmed from an incident. Uh, There was an incident that happened in the news that was not related to us at all. Uh, We just read where there was a a hate crime that happened against a professor at the uh, University of Columbia. And the, the hate crime was really steeped in just sort of simple minded ignorance. And what inspired us was not the fact that this happened. What inspired us was the, the way that the professor responded. Instead of criminalizing his attackers, he sought to educate. He didn't feel, he literally said in um, some of his interviews that he didn't see how incarcerating more youth in that neighborhood was going to help anything. But educating them and informing them and letting them know the, 
not only the sort of unique and, and special uh, and really juicy differences, but showing them the unity between the practice or the, the faith that he um, was housed under and what else existed would be a way to, to bridge gaps, uh, gaps and bring peace. Mm -hmm. So being inspired by this, I thought, wow, you know, um, I can remember one small incident in my life where I was uh, uh, just a young man and was uh, in, a, in a, a situation, an altercation, uh, where I felt rather attacked, let's just say, uh, physically. And I remember what my heart space was there, and my heart space was one of retaliation and rebellion. And to see this man suffer something similar but much worse and have a heart space that was in a completely different, you know, area was really inspirational. So we set aside the, the task of writing notes to him. The notion of peace notes uh, is simple. Basically, when people suffer at the hands of other human beings, they're suffering because those human beings are housing thoughts that aren't productive. And so thoughts that are productive can be healing. So if people receive letters of support, it can really impact them when they're in the midst of those tough situations. So we had a, a Peace Notes campaign last year. There was one recipient. We had a, a Peace Notes campaign this year. There were two recipients. Um, and hopefully it will grow into an annual thing. But it's, it's a simple act of service. It's something that anyone can do. It doesn't take a, a huge sweeping organization, right? You just you find someone. You get a group together, they write letters letting the person know that someone's heart is with them, that they are not alone, that there's a, a genuine sense of apology from one member of the human family for the behaviors of other members of our human family, right? Mm -hmm. And so that that person who's suffering has a reminder and they don't slip into retaliatory thought or, you know, slip into and, and get held in the sort of the, cra uh, the clasp, if you will, of anger. I can only imagine how people feel when they receive these notes because at least I see them at One Spirit and we have the opportunity to write them at One Spirit and hang them up mm -hmm. before they're um, taken to the recipients. And just to think how um, I would think their heart would open to be able to read these messages from people that they don't know who are sending and sharing love and letting them know that they matter. Yeah. So, Sonia, I want to talk about... I, Recently, you guys were participating in a march, right? Not too long ago. Yes, we uh, were part of the climate march uh, for change. About uh, I think it was in October, mm -hmm. and uh, I think we were part of 300,000 participants in New York, uh, one of the world's largest marches. And one spirit, we we marched with uh, the faith-based contingencies, and we partnered with Romamo. Uh, and Romamu is a, uh, a synagogue in uh, New York, a very progressive and very awesome synagogue. And uh, so we marched under their uh, banner and with ours. And, um, you know, it's just one of the many focuses that we, uh, we might look at for love-based action and, and change and being able to make that kind of impact. So how do you select, I would think there are so much that needs to be done that can be done. How do you select what you're going to do, where you're going to put your energy? I think spirit moves us. Uh, somebody will say, hey, Sonia, <laughs> we really have to do this. I'll say, really, we should do this, and, and or Ty will come up with something. Or That one was actually Susan Turchin, uh, who is a, uh, a dean and, and uh, in the leadership committee at One Spirit, and she's very passionate about um, climate and environmental issues and asked us to do this. And so, um, so it's often a suggestion, like many change, like many things that are impactful. It's an idea comes to somebody's mind and it comes out of their mouth and they share it and, and it grows. And that's how change happens, I think. Ty, you were talking a moment ago, thank you, Sonia, about You're welcome. how something occurred to you and in, in that moment you felt maybe upset or angry and when I was thinking about the show, I was thinking about how working from a love energy, from an open heart space, would position you to be in a place where other people might be. I mean, people are upset right now. There's just there's just so much going on. There's so much turmoil. There's so much the political system's falling apart. There's all these this wars and people harming each other. And so I would think that 
even just the presence of those of you, those of us who are working from that heart space in the midst of this tension might mm -hmm. diffuse that and help raise the vibration and help it be even a more successful endeavor? Well, I mean, I would, I would agree and say that I'm very hopeful. I would also say that uh, the, the conversation around love and heart space and, you know, sort of the invisible unitive mystery is a rather large and esoteric conversation, right? Mm -hmm. So where people who aren't even, where that's not even within their mental landscape or, you know, their experiential landscape, just connect with simple logic. Simple logic. It makes, peace makes sense. Service makes sense. Mm -hmm. it, our survival is dependent upon it. It's actually, systematically, it is, it is harder, but it's, it's, the result is going to be a lot better than what we have. The result will be almost, and tends to be almost dreamlike. When we look at some of the things that are happening in the news now that seem really volatile and divisive, right. when you look at the faces that are participating, you can still see unity there. Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like if you're if you're looking through those eyes, you can see it, and it continues to foster hope. You know, so it doesn't have to be. It doesn't have to be a, a group of intensely, um, intensely devout people meditating in a high mountain, right? And then <laughs> sitting down to do service. It's just everybody using whatever they have within their resources. Um, to just say I'm here, mm -hmm. to connect with someone eye to eye and know that that person is a human being who stems from a family who houses thoughts and fears and hopes just like you and trying to find something small that you can do and then taking it from there. I mean, I, most of the things that, that we've done haven't been these large, grandiose, epic, you know, uh, stratosphere level earth changing opportunities they've been small conversations that we said wow within our busy schedule we might be able to do this one thing and then other people got excited about it and something small got a little bigger and I think that that is really what the the power of one spirit in action mm -hmm. I agree Ty um, you know uh, this holiday season instead of uh Instead of organizing a, uh, a particular event or, a, or an initiative, we put out to, uh, to the community, hey, uh, this year your initiative is, is to create your own, is, is to find some way within yourself to, to do your own act of service. But not just do it, but share it. Let people know what you did, because that's where the growing of it comes from. Um, so, like, suggestion was uh, to to you could do a stealth giving event or or a thing. You could just maybe pack an extra lunch on your way to wherever you're going, or an extra whatever to share with somebody. But also uh, maybe bring along a note. You remember those cards we used to give out, uh, suggesting where somebody could go for more more help or assistance, or or um, or somewhere to stay. Um, but also we were suggesting find ways of, of creating your own drives and doing different things to, to benefit others. For example, we had a holiday party this year and instead of it just being a holiday party, we decided, okay, we're going to, um, this is more personal. Uh, this isn't, isn't with One Spirit in Action as much as some of the other things that Ty and I do. And we said, come on, let's do a Just Love campaign drive for, um, for uh, a particular organization in New, Jer in New Jersey uh, called Front Porch, uh, that will um, that helps uh, children and, and uh, moms that are, uh, are are that don't have uh, that don't have um, diapers or anything uh, or any kind of food or any of those kind of supplies. Infants. So uh, people that came to the party brought gifts, uh, brought boxes of supplies for children, and we ended up with a garage full of donations to help. Uh, to help an organization when we just would have had a, a gathering. So there's lots of ways that all of us could be in service in our lives and, and just piggyback on the, the simple things that we're doing. Mm -hmm. And with that, we could be in action of, of helping others. 
Just thinking out of the box a little bit. So that's yeah. the thing we were kind of asking students to do too is is however you'd mind doing it, whether it's uh, if it's visiting um, visiting a, a nursing home or uh, or a neighbor that might seem lonely or or need some extra time or attention or a hands with their groceries. And it, you know, yes, that doesn't sound like a big deal, but expanding our minds to where we could give a little more, it changes things. And it's probably a big deal for that person, you know, who um, they they showed a couple of young guys who, with the big snowstorm, were just out going up and down the street, not saying anything, not asking for money, just shoveling the driveway. And, you know, mm -hmm. all the people are coming out and going, "Wow, this is this is like the good old days." Yeah, <laughs> you know, it's nice. People, people seem to do that more yeah. than maybe people think they do now. So the, the need is so vast. Are there any particular areas or focus that you think need need particular attention right now? I'm sure every everything does, but is there anything that sort of bubbles to the top or either as a group or individually, personally, you think are, are key issues that could use some attention and focus? Well, for me, I, I you know, my strongest passion is is uh, is peace, peace movements and uh, nonviolence. Awareness. That's probably where I lean more. Um, I had the pleasure of speaking to uh, a group in there was a there was an event in Queens a few weeks ago uh, that was led by some folks from the UN that we and One Spirit in Action supported about a year ago, and they were looking for interface folks to um, to come and support and speak there. And this event was uh, Peace for All Day, and it was uh, celebrating Muhammad's birthday. And it was an entirely Islamic uh, group, and it was uh, pretty awesome to see uh, all the different uh, religious uh, folks and and not necessarily secular coming together and speaking about peace, uh, including this Islamic community. It was quite beautiful, and uh, and that's the stuff. That's the stuff that moves me. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 I would. Beautiful. I would ha I would agree definitely with uh, uh, Sonia and I. I definitely mm -hmm. shared the share the sort of the drive or the the peace bug. And when we see people getting together mm -hmm. that are supposed to be in camps of other, right? These sort of mm -hmm. fictional camps of other, right? That uh, <laughs> yeah. we see yeah. them come together and 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 move beyond. Um, mm -hmm. You know that fiction into a a, a reality based unity based. Um, situation when they are able to keep their unique diversity, their unique manifestations, and still come together to do something and have a dialogue. It's really exciting. The uh, the other area, of course, um, and it, it seems to be what a, a large percentage of our work does, it, it goes around serving those in need. And mm -hmm. that isn't necessarily just the, the homeless and the hungry, but just that seems to be where... Um, where the, at least for me, the most transformative uh, actions have come. Whenever mm -hmm. we've gone out and done something together, uh, it stays with you. It, it stays with you in a, in a way that uh, affects your own sense of, of self and your own sense of purpose and that it flows over into your day. Mm -hmm. Yes. Well, I, I, I really agree. appreciate how both of, you know, reading over both your, your bios, uh, I like Ty, one of the things you you call yourself as a love advocate. I don't think I've ever seen that in writing. I think it's pretty awesome. And Sonia, big, big fan of love. The path of love. Well, yeah. you know, I always think there's, you know, there's, there's at the extremes, there's, I think, love and there's fear. Mm -hmm. so, um, the, the path of love is just so... Um, so engaging. It's so right. It's so what we all need to be at the core of who we are and how we live, right? Yeah. To vibrate, absolutely. To vibrate in that kind of energy. Uh, so if we have if we have viewers out there who are like, oh, I really, um, I want to do something, but I don't know what to do, and they contact you, I'm assuming you can connect them with something or get them involved somehow. Um, how might you guide someone if they contact you? First, tell tell us your website so people know how to reach you. Well, we don't have an actual website currently, but we do have a Facebook page and oh, a discussion perfect. group. So oh, um, please like us on our Facebook page. Uh, 
please join our discussion group. That would probably be the best way to really be clear on, on uh, events because I, I believe we're moving forward we're, we are going to start creating Facebook events and we'll be able to invite people and be able to pass out the information that way. I think it's more succinct. Um, and it really gets it to everybody. So I think that's where we might go. So if you're on the discussion group, we'll send an invitation. And Facebook's great too, because then people can share with people, share with people, share with people. Absolutely, and you can you can get into the sharing, and also like the page. You could always get on that page. You could see everything we've done, and and when something's coming up, you could always pop on. You'll see what's going on. Awesome. Are there well, any? Would, oh, go ahead, Ty, please. Well, well, I would I would what I would add to that too. You said um, if if people contacted us and said, uh, how could they do something in their sort of regular work-a-day lives? I would say pick, pick something simple, something that you can do on the way to work, while you're at work, on the way home, or with your family even. Um, something that doesn't have to be uh, super organized to start, like to, to build that service muscle. Like at One Spirit, you know, we had passing out, you know, protein bars on the street and just carrying uh, an extra bit of them. So when you see somebody that's hungry in the city, boom, you just pass one out. Then you share that experience with the people in your circle, in your community, in your lives, and see if they want to take that up as well. And then before you know it, something small and simple comes a little bigger, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And and that's how I think things start and things grow. When it's, I mean, big organized uh, operations for giving are wonderful; they're awesome. Um, it's just when you're, if you start small, it seems more manageable, and then it grows in a way that you don't feel like all the effort is stemming from you, uh, which also um, increases the the joy and the and the mystery of it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Thank you. I Beautiful. think it's um, I think that's really important that whole thing about. Every little bit makes a difference versus people mm -hmm. feeling overwhelmed or thinking they have to do some big thing for a huge amount of people. Even if you um, are helping and connecting with one person, you're being of service in that way. Yeah, you I, have a, I have a friend who's uh, 94 years old who, when I first moved from Alaska to Connecticut 16 years ago, I didn't know anyone. And um, a friend of his son back in Alaska, and his son was like, you have to look up my father and, my, and his mother. I was like, I'm sure they have plenty to do than to hang out with me. But I did. And so, you know, every two weeks for 16 years, I go and I visit him. And his wife has passed away, and I felt blessed to, to be there um, as that was happening. And now, you know, this gentleman, he can't hear very well. He can't see very well. But and he's like, oh, you're, you're just the sunshine when you come to visit me. I'm like, you don't know what it does for me to come and, and spend time with you and, and, and be of service to you whether it's running sure. errands or just sitting to be with him. And so it's one person, it's one thing, but it feels like it makes a difference and it feels like I'm being a service and it feels like a beautiful and wonderful thing to be able to do. So that just harkens back to every person can do something for somebody. Right. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. And you never know. Absolutely. And when, you, when, you're, when you're not connected to the uh, outcome, you never know where it can go. Right, you never know where it can go. I'm, I'm struggling to think of a name. Uh, I was a, 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 a reverend and, and spiritual figure that I did a report on, whose name now escapes me. But I remember a story um, of this gentleman trying to make it to school, being dropped off at a train station, um, and realizing he didn't have enough money for the train. Someone who we never knew, never met, um, again gave him the money to take that trip. He took that trip became a really, really powerful sort of speaker and inspirational uh, person in our history and later was quoted as one of the inspirations of Martin Luther King. Do you know what I mean? It's, it's stories like that, like who was the person that gave him the money, right? What was the state of mind in that moment when he did that? Um, and I realize the story would be a lot more impactful if I could remember the names, right? But uh, it's, it's late. Still, still <laughs> it's impactful. Late. It's still impactful. Um, yeah. You know, but um, it's still, it's just, you never know, you know, you tug the web. You never know where one little act, like how it's connected to something um, that could happen down the line that's a lot greater than anything you can imagine. And it's a simple thing. It doesn't have to be this Herculean effort. It can be one little thing. And everybody can do it. You don't have to have 
special degree. You don't have to have a certain amount of money. You don't, you know, no, you just have no. to be human. And, you know, I always think of it like this. I always think that I want to treat other people how I would want to be treated back. You never know what situation you're going to end up with. They say now that um, so many people in our country are one or two paychecks away from being that person you're passing on the street. You know, Absolutely. you just never know what might happen with your job or with your health, and just to um, treat people like you want to be treated back. It's, it, to me, it seems so simple. Mm. So sometimes when I look around, it's like some people seem to think that's so hard because they're, they don't, they're not doing it. But to me, it's, it's really that. Mm. I, think, I, think, I think, too, it's the... I wonder if it's that people think it's difficult or if they wonder how impactful it's going to be. Because we're a society that's based on goals and results, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So if you feed one person, you might think, okay, well, I just fed that one person. That person's still homeless. They're still going to be on the street. And what good did it do? But you never really know the results, the impact. You could feed that person, and they could either, I, you know, change themselves around, or if that's too miraculous, maybe someone else sees you feed that person, mm -hmm. and they're inspired for the day to be kinder to the people that they're usually not so kind to that they work with. And then those people take that energy home to their, mm -hmm. you know, husbands right. and wives and kids. It's that, it's those kind of connections that we can't see. That's the impact that you really make. Um, Absolutely, Ty. You know, yeah. I mean, measurable results are awesome. I mean, I love, you know, I, 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 I love to see measurable impact, but sometimes you can't see that in the moment. Well, it's like, um, I know some people will say, well, I really don't want to give this person $3 because maybe they'll go buy beer with it instead of buying food with it. I just don't think of it that way. You know, I, if, if I feel from my heart like I'm going to give this person $3, for me, I'm not going to dictate to them what they're going to do with it. You know, yeah. higher power is watching them. They're doing whatever they need to do. I'm giving without, you know, anticipating what I have to get back from it. Right. Yeah, but that's just my perspective. But I definitely know people who are like, well, I won't give money, but I'll go buy a sandwich, which is perfectly fine too. The person might be hungry. Mm -hmm. But, you know, that money might actually help them buy diapers for their child or something. I don't know. I just, yeah. I just don't have any judgment around it. But I'm comfortable mm -hmm. with that. Yeah, I, I, I relate to that, yeah, I feel the same way, and, and, and even like uh, one of the things Ty was saying, uh, when we were out doing that, um, that stealth giving, several different times people would come over to me and say, hey, can I help, here's my card, mm -hmm. call me next time you do this, hey, yeah. here's some money, I'm not comfortable giving this to people, can you give this to someone? please give this to someone. It was just in perfect time because somebody came over with $10 when I gave out my last bag of food <laughs> and there was one more homeless man mm -hmm. standing there. I had the $10 and I looked at him and I go, we were in Penn Station. I said, what would you like for dinner? And he said, you like this? I go, come on, let's go eat <laughs> the money. And it was all in divine order. So yeah, it is, and it is impactful. It's, it's not just the, 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 um, the, that amazing moment uh, that you get to share with a stranger. Um, of of being one with them and and offering them uh, offering them some help and 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 receiving their gratitude, which is often pretty amazing. But but how many people are impacted around you by it? It's it's there's a real ripple effect. Yeah, absolutely. And and so is the, so is the peace work that um, that whole perspective of peace work. Um, I mean, Martin Luther King said um, he said mankind must evolve uh, for all human conflict a method which rejects re revenge, aggression, and retaliation, and the foundation of that method is love. Uh, Viktor Frankl's quoted as saying, it's salvation of man is in love and through love. Um, and, and Gandhi says that, uh, you know, to be the change you want to be in the world, uh, but he says that love is the strongest force the world possesses. But yet, you know, we don't know how to use that love to make that difference. Um, but when you look to teachers like, uh, like um, the Dalai Lama or, or, um, or Thich Nhat Hanh, they say you have to be it yourself to make the difference. So I think I just went on another tangent, but I guess I wanted to, to, to uh, kind of talk a little bit about the shifting consciousness towards love within ourselves to make the difference outside yeah. of ourselves. Yeah. I, I think it takes the inner work. Um, to, to bring us there, so, and and it and it, that also ripples out. So. 
It needs to start there, right? It, it absolutely does. Because yeah. it seems that it's, you know it can be a bit more difficult to be love to and towards other people if you don't have it with yourself. And a lot of people don't. A lot of people don't have self love. Sometimes when I work with people, I have them stand and I, I, I go in the bathroom. Nobody's there but you. Close the door, look in the mirror, and say I love you in the mirror. Mm -hmm. And people will say, oh, I, it's, I can't do it. Go back in there. <laughs> you know, you do it enough. Yeah. Now that yeah. rule of 21, you do it enough, you'll actually start to believe it. You'll start to mm -hmm. feel it. You'll start to yeah. live it. And then it's yeah, gonna I, and it's gonna have that ripple effect and really make a difference in your life and in the life of people around you. And that's why I think if people are in an environment or raised in an environment where they weren't nurtured and didn't have love, then it's harder for them. But there are places you can go. There are people you can connect with. There are groups like yours um, where people can go and they'll feel that love, they'll feel that energy, and collectively be able to make the difference. What, one of one of our one of our great uh, visiting teachers. Um, Andrew Harvey uh, said that he advises people to follow their heartbreak. Mm -hmm. So there are those um, who do, who much of their, you know, sacred service or in, in his uh, in his language, sacred activism, stems from their pain. And in the, and although that's not my personal experience, a lot of the a lot of the great things that have happened on the planet stem from people trying to love themselves through that pain, struggling, failing to, seeing that pain in others, and loving them. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? So that it was a, a, a way for them to, to really heal themselves and, and sitting with that. I mean, we talk to people in your your day-to-day -day lives, the, the friends you have, the loved ones you have, the colleagues you have, and you can see the places where they don't love themselves. Mm -hmm. The places where they don't see their own value, the, the places where either their mind or the, the social, uh, the mental construct that our society has, you know, evolved around uh, the things we have or the things we do or produce, um, how that, those ideologies have affected people and hurt them. And then you see them working through it and some real jewels, some real sort of nuggets of light come through that process. You know, um, so it's it, there's a variety of ways. I, it it doesn't matter like it doesn't matter what you give. Um, it doesn't matter um, how you do it. If you're just in the process of and the practice of doing it, it's going to make a change. And that's really, I think, what one spirit is about. Give. I don't care what it is. If it's your time, if it's a glance, if it's a smile, if it's food, if it's peace, if it's a letter, if it's a hug. Give and in the process of doing that and building that muscle, things change. Things change. Yeah, and we just did say that this wonderful organization that has sprung up from One Spirit Learning Alliance. I just want to encourage the viewers to check out One Spirit because it's a, an amazing seminary school and it's got yeah, awesome. people and so much to learn and wonderful workshops and great leadership and I could just go on and on and on. So, you guys, can you believe it? Our hour is almost up already. That's amazing, huh? <laughs> ah. How do we get an extension? How did this happen? That's right. We need a two-hour show. But, you know, what I'd like to do, I'd like to have each of you, um, if you were going to leave the viewers with one thought or one phrase of wisdom or just something you really like them to hold on to um, as we wrap up the hour, what would you say to them? Hmm. I would say uh, that there's only one wisdom tradition. Uh, love is its teacher, the universe is its classroom, and each and every one of you um, are its star pupil. And if you keep that in mind, and you keep that in your heart space, and you act from that place, amazing things will happen. Beautiful. Thank you, Ty. Thank you, Ty. Well, I would say um, to do what you can to recognize and embrace the, uh, the abundant spirit that is love around you. And, um, and if you can, do what you can to touch the hearts of those around you with it. It makes, it, makes, it makes a wave of change. 
Well, I want to thank both of you, Sonia and Ty, for being here. And, you know, God bless you. It's, a, it's wonderful work that you're doing and it's impacting a lot of people. And I just have this vision of the snowball that, probably because it's been snowing so much as well, <laughs> it just picks up, speed, <laughs> picks, up, picks up speed and picks up people and picks up energy and, you know, raises yeah. the vibration and that collectively it makes such an incredible difference in the, in the world that we live in, uh, in the kind of people that we are. And uh, in the heart energy and heart space that we can share and just making this world a, a beautiful and wonderful place to be. So I want to thank you both very much for for taking the time to be with us and with the viewers tonight. Thank any, you. Any blessings to you. Blessings many blessings. You. Thank you for the work you're doing, Lynette. It's just fantastic. Yeah. Thank, yeah, thank you. Thank, thank you. you. My pleasure. Much love. Thank you. Much, Much love. love to you both. Okay. So I want to thank again everybody for joining me. This is Positiveologist Lynette Turner. And remember, it's all about bliss. B-L-I-S-S. -S. Believe life is something special. Because it is, and so are you. And I encourage you to take a walk through the land of positivity. I know you're going to appreciate and love the view. And until next time, this is Lynette Turner, Positiveologist. I'll see you once again on the Positiveologist is in the house. Many blessings. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.